Hi, Marge. But welcome into our study for this week, our midweek study. Isn't it nice to have some bright skies and warmer temperatures and getting rid of some of the ice and snow? Welcome change from last Wednesday. But uh, just looking here and seeing who's <clears throat> logged in, it sort of reminds me, those of you who are my age or older, uh, reminds me of, uh, remember the show Romper Room? where the teacher would stare into the camera and say, I see Billy and I see Sally. And every week as a kid, you wonder, is she going to see me this week? I'm just looking here to see who I could see logged in to our study. The more things change, the more things stay the same, isn't it? So we have been studying the topic of peace, obviously. And I thought we'd start this evening uh, by just asking this question, why are we studying this over uh, more than a month now? And uh, in this way, in that way, we'll sort of review a bit some of the things we've said. Um, why study peace? Why take time to you know zone in on this topic? Uh, for for Christians. We have to think about the fact that Jesus, by prophecy, was called the Prince of Peace. You might remember him uh, being called that in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He is Prince of Peace. It says some other things about him there. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. But then it calls him Prince of Peace. And then, um, as we study the New Testament... It's interesting that nearly every letter of the New Testament ends with peace in some way. There is a, a greeting at the end of almost every letter that includes the word peace. And so that's important. Hi, Pan. And uh, peace is, is uh, the essence of the gospel in many ways, which we'll see tonight. And peace is the gift of Christ. And so, um, being followers of Christ and um, interested in what he's about and what we receive from him, it is a gift that he gives. You know, uh, the New Testament says that Jesus made peace by the blood of his cross, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And so... In order to understand that very important truth and that, that great verse, uh, we have to understand what peace is. Made peace by the blood of his cross. That's an amazing statement if you think about it. How does an instrument of torture um, make peace? How is there peace in the midst of bloodshed? That kind of thing. But that's what the scripture says. So in the New Testament, this word peace, which uh, the original word in the Greek is irene, uh, for those familiar with a little bit of Greek, and that's all I'm familiar with is a little bit, it's the word irene. We talked about some of the Old Testament words for peace, shalom, and so forth, um, but the word irene, peace, translated peace in the New Testament occurs over 90 times, so it's prominent. Uh, you know, 27 books in the New Testament, the word occurs more than 90 times, 25 times in the Gospels. So in those four books, it occurs quite a bit. And so for all those reasons, and then also I think there's just a sense, isn't there, that there is a decided lack of peace right now in our world, and it's something needed. Truth be told, it probably always has been lacking in the world, but we're certainly conscious of it right now. And you know, peace is a word that we've grown used to and it becomes so familiar over time that uh, that we just sort of assume we know what it what it is. And if we were to take a pop quiz and and we were asked to define peace, maybe we'd struggle a bit with it. Uh, 
And so it's it's always dangerous to assume that that we know what it means and and the importance of it. So for all those reasons, and I'm sure others, that's why we've taken some time to devote to it. So just a couple more concepts and really out of the New Testament tonight. Um, I want us to think first about the, the idea that peace is the gift of Jesus, the gift of Christ. Um, earlier in the study, we, we looked at the night before Jesus was crucified, uh, the night on which he was betrayed. Remember how he spent so much time with the disciples that night. And there's this long section in the Gospel of John where Jesus is interacting with them, teaching them. At one point, he washes their feet, uh, you know, uh, does what we call uh, institutes the Lord's Supper. Uh, a lot of important things happen, but mostly a lot of teaching. They hear a lot from Jesus on that night. And in John 14, uh, verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So underlining, again, this idea that peace is a gift of Jesus. It's a gift of Christ. And then when we come into um, the, the letters and the, and the books after the Gospels, uh, after Jesus had given himself and um, made his sacrifice for us, and writers like Paul and Peter and others begin to to develop what does that mean that Jesus died for us? What's the importance of it? Um, there's a lot in there about peace. For instance, in uh, the, the Roman letter, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, which is a really important chapter and verse. But uh, that verse says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, and remember what justification is, uh, what does it mean that I'm justified? It means I'm made right. Okay. Um, easiest way to remember that for me is uh, to sort of play off the word justified uh, and and understand it just as if I'd never sinned. I'm made just as if I never sinned. Justified. Justified by faith. Uh, Paul says, since we have been justified by faith, we have, do you remember what he says we have with God? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, peace is right at the heart of the gospel uh, because we've been made just as if we've never sinned because of our faith in in Jesus, we now have peace with God. It must must mean that before that we did not. And uh, it's all through the work of Jesus. So it is the gift of Jesus. There's another text that really uh, expresses this so well, I think. And again, it's from Paul. Uh, in chapter 2 of Ephesians, I just want to read a few of these verses together in this study. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, you know, this sort of starts out on what sounds like a, a really negative, bad news point, but it quickly becomes good news. So uh, chapter 2, verse 1 of Ephesians says, And you were dead. Well, that's not good news. You know, it doesn't sound like good news. You were dead. In the trespasses and sins in which, in which you once walked. That's how Ephesians 2 begins. All right. You were dead in sin. All right. So what's going to happen from there? Well, if we skip down, and we're skipping a lot of really great and important stuff, of course, in between. But we're going to skip down to verse 13, because that's where our, our word study comes uh, to the fore. All right. So it starts out, and you were dead in sin, uh, verse 13. But, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So now we're starting to see the good news. All right. In Christ, 
you who were once far off. Far off in what sense? You were far off from God. You were separated from God. Why? Because you were dead in sin. Verse 1. But now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Again, the blood emphasized. Um, but going on, verse 14. For he himself, that is Christ, for he himself is our peace. Uh, it's almost like a, a mathematical equation. And there are a lot of these in the New Testament. This is one of the great ones. Jesus equals peace. For he himself is our peace. Well, what does that mean? What's he getting at? It goes on and says, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Jesus has brought previously alienated things together. Uh, primarily, I think he's talking about God and the sinner. He's brought them together. He's also uh, working with Jews and Gentiles in that division in the first century. And he, he's brought them together. So you can see both those things here. He's made us both one and broken down this dividing wall. Verse 15, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace. See how it's bringing the two into one. And might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. So uh, and talking about the work of, of, of Jesus, he, he preached peace to those who were far off, those who really didn't know God, the Gentiles. Uh, but he also pre preached to those who were near, those who did know God, believed in the one God, but had not really um, gotten into a relationship with him um, and, and needed to accept Christ in order to do so. He's, he's brought all these together. He preached peace to the, the far away ones and peace to the near ones. And now they all have access in one spirit to the Father. So all throughout that, uh, you have this word peace again and again. And again, it is the gift of Jesus. Peace comes from Jesus. It's the presence of Jesus. It's the gift of Jesus. It's the result of his work. And so it's so precious to us. And now that we've been given peace because of the blood of Christ, because of the cross of Christ, because we've been justified by faith in Christ, now we've been gifted that by Jesus. Now it is ours to gift to others. You see, it doesn't just stop with us. We now have the privilege of sharing that gift with others. And so, as I said, many of the New Testament letters end in some way with the idea of peace, a peace to you, the writers say at the end or, or someplace uh, within the letter. So, for instance, we have Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, um, where, where the writer there says, strive for peace with everyone. Now he's writing to these uh, Hebrew Christians, and um, it's not just about, okay, you've all been brought near to God and you have peace with God. Now enjoy that. Stay in your, your religious club and enjoy your peace. No, strive for peace with everyone. It's something we gift to others now. And then another place is uh, the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, uh, Paul says, live in peace. Sounds very similar to Hebrews 12. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. So it's just, again and again, uh, it's... Uh, sort of the capstone to to uh, New Testament writings. So it's such a, a central concept. And 
And we might well remember uh, Jesus' great sermon and what we call the Beatitudes. You remember uh, one of the Beatitudes involves this word. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are those who make peace, or it's usually translated, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Jesus was talking about this before he had done all the work uh, that was required for it to happen before he had gone to the cross. Uh, blessed are those who make peace. And so it it has been given to us in Christ, and now we gift it to others. Uh, in, in some of my research and study on this, I ran across a quote. Um, there was a little article on peace in a theological dictionary, and I thought the quote uh, was particularly good. I just want to share a part of it, just in defining uh, what peace is. The writer said, Peace is an idea distinct to Christianity, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. The tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is. And so therein, that's sort of a, a fancy way of expressing what we tried to say through all of this. You know, you can have peace despite whatever circumstances you're in in the world, be they great or not so great, uh, because your peace is based on your relationship with God through Christ. It's peace is the presence of the Lord in your life. Uh, it's not the absence of bad things that you might encounter. And so I, I like the way that that was expressed and the idea that you know, peace is, is an idea distinct to Christianity. Yes, the world talks about peace, but not, not the way uh, the New Testament uh, defines it. Uh, the idea of a tranquil state of soul, assured of salvation, fearing nothing from God, that's the basis of peace. When we're at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, then we have something truly uh, rare and special. Uh, I think it was last week that uh, we started the lesson uh, by playing a song uh, and there's a lot of great songs in, in Christian hymnody uh, about peace. And I just wanted to finish by reading one tonight. Uh, I didn't find a good recording of it, but it's, it's entitled Prince of Peace, Control My Will. And uh, it's based on Colossians 3 and John 14 texts that we've looked at before. But just listen to these words uh, that in sort of a poem poem form expresses all we've been discovering in scripture about this. Prince of Peace, control my will. Bid this struggling heart be still. Bid my fears and doubtings cease. Hush my spirit into peace. Verse 2. Thou hast bought me with thy blood. Open wide the gate of God. Peace I ask, but peace must be, Lord, in being one with thee. May thy will, not mine, be done. May thy will and mine be one. Chase these doubtings from my heart. Now thy perfect peace impart. And the last verse of the song says, Savior, at thy feet I fall. Thou my life, my God, my all. Let thy happy servant be one forevermore with thee. It's one of the great, great Christian hymns. And 
in, in song form really expresses, sums up so many of those scriptures that we've looked at uh, throughout this. And so keeping in mind that, that peace is the gift that Jesus gives us and then calls on us to give to others. And that's a, a way of thinking about the whole Christian life, isn't it? Uh, may God's peace be with you. Uh, may, may you be a giver of peace, a peacemaker. And may we learn more and more what that looks like by learning more and more about who Jesus was. Uh, thank you for being a part of our study. We'll, we'll get into something else next week. Uh, but I appreciate you being a part of this. Let's pray as we close. Holy Father, thank you for your love and thank you especially tonight for the peace we have in Jesus who did all the work to give it to us. Um, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with you. And that is a wonderful comfort and it's beyond price. Pray your, uh, your blessing on all those who are in most need this evening, those who are suffering, be it physical or spiritual, and help them to know your peace and help us to be givers of it as we have opportunity. Thank you for your word. Pray that we're being faithful with it, not only understanding what it says, but living it out. And and thank you for, for showing us in your son how much you love us. We pray in his name. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we will see you all soon. God bless you. And uh, may you.